Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. You know, Pastor, as we all know, recently there's a trial that's been going on that's all over the media. It's the Rittenhouse trial, right? And uh, we see that the media has had an effect on this whole thing. What are your thoughts about what the media is doing with this trial? Well, you know, the judge himself made a comment about that. He said that the way that it has been covered by the media has biased. It had biases and uh, was actually uh, uh, causing the potential for some great harm in finding justice or to discovering it because it was confusing to uh, the uh, the jurors and uh, has caused a lot of problems. So. My ideas about that is that there's no real hunger for justice uh, amongst the people who profess to be the ones who are pursuing it. It's, it's more a matter of finding ways to bias people to be opposed to uh, a certain way of thinking. And so uh, the way I've been looking at that recently, I haven't followed it really that closely, but I have been taking note of it is that uh, it's just typical of a, a biased world system that is truly opposed to, to actual justice. You know, the Bible teaches us that there is such a thing as justice, that God is a just judge, and therefore his justice that he renders is always going to be a justice that is based on the fact is true, it's unbiased, and it's what we would call a righteous judgment. A judgment that Jesus himself said that we should judge. He's, he said unto us, he said, he said, uh, judge not according to appearance, he said, but judge righteous judgment. And so there are those who don't understand that, that part of uh, the system that God has established is a system that looks for that which is righteous and true and then judges accordingly. And so the world system doesn't have that, John. The world system is biased. It's biased towards its own preferences. And because it is, if they have a disagreement with somebody, if they feel that somebody has done something that in general people don't approve of, they'll do whatever they have to. And it's obvious more now than ever before to find a way for that person to be found guilty, not of breaking a law, because as they're looking at the various things, the charges that were brought against this young man, a boy who was 17 years old when this occurred, they're, they're trying to find a way to to uh, satisfy their own anger at what they perceive to be quote-unquote injustices. It's the same people that are, are turning a blind eye to the rioting, the defacing, the, the looting, the stealing, the, the anger, the hatred. And they're turning a blind eye to all of that that was taking place. And even right now, where justice is, is, is being held hostage by people standing outside of the courthouse and, and giving warnings, you know, that if things don't go our way, we're going to riot. You know, they've already had serious riots in that area. That's the reason why this young kid came to try and protect people's establishments, because he saw how wrong it is for people to just break in, loot, and walk away with no penalty at all. So this little boy, this young boy, had a lot of courage, though I don't think he had much common sense, frankly. But he certainly had a lot of courage to go out and try and right what he perceived was a wrong and so how do i feel about it i feel that this young man is is they're going to try to there there's going to be an attempt it already is here to uh, railroad him to satisfy people who are threatening that if you don't judge in the way that we want you to we will riot hmm. and so i i i fear that this has become the norm how that they ignored the press ignored what was taking place in Seattle, what was taking place in Portland, you know, what took place in Los Angeles, in New York, the uh, the pillaging, the rioting, the so-called anger and indignation, when in fact, you know, there may be some peaceful demonstrators, some who really feel that things need to be addressed. And, and who is to say that things shouldn't be addressed? You know, there needs to be a, an awareness of, of of what is going on that is wrong and all of that, and a writing of those wrongs. Who, who would argue with that? But there's too many people who say, I'm so angry, the only thing that'll satisfy me is a new television set or somebody's clothes, you know? And 
So they steal it from shops and then they put it on eBay and try and make a profit. You know, these are not people who are justice warriors. These are thieves. These are looters. These are, these are, these are they're, they're, they're people who haven't got a clue what righteousness is or justice is. You know, and so uh, I, I think he's going to be railroaded. I pray that he isn't. Mm -hmm. But that's what's happened in the past. You know, they're calling this kid a racist. The very first thing they called him was a white supremacist. That came out of a major newspaper article where this kid has no ties in what in any way whatsoever with any white supremacy groups of any sort. He's a kid who wants to be in law enforcement. He's a kid who's a volunteer. He saw he saw wrong taking place. He came to try and clean up the graffiti and um, and he shouldn't have been, in my opinion, you know, I don't know, I'll put it this way. I don't know that I would want my 17 year old to go and do that for the danger that he'd be putting himself in. But um, he did. And what bothers me on top of all of that is how he's immediately targeted and he's immediately mocked. You know, guys like the LeBron James who posted in, and uh, spoke concerning his his tears being fake and and he ate some lemon heads, which is making him make that face. And I'm, I'm thinking of a guy who gets felled and cries on the court. I mean, you know, this, this legal scholar, uh, LeBron, this guy who, who is an intellectual, you know, that is ridiculous. And for people to think that, that he has anything to say that's worth hearing as it pertains to this, just shows the sickness of the society that we live in. Everything is racist today. Everything. That is a Democrat talking point, to be honest with you. Let's divide the nation so that we can take it over. Mm. That's what I see. And I really think there's a gross injustice that could possibly take place in the judgment of this young man. With all that, you know, and as you're mentioning that the people were, are wanting to railroad him, I think when the people were, or were yelling out towards Jesus, crucify him, crucify, which is the same, just same attitude, same attitude. Uh, as the church, how are to re we respond to this hijacked injustice or this, this injustice? That I believe is that we, I think that we need to be open. I think it's time for us to open our mouths, come out of the closet. I, there's a lot of people who don't want to be canceled. You know, oh, they're gonna they're gonna be mad at us or whatever. You know, I don't think we should go and stand in front of rioters and protesters and and pick a fight by any means. But uh, we do have the salt and light effect of our daily daily conversations and our lifestyles and the places we go. We ought to be open to speaking our mind about these things uh, without fear of reprisal. We ought to be able to do that. We. We realize that we're going to be, if we're taking a stand for righteousness, that we are going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. Jesus taught mm -hmm. us that, you know, so we need to be aware of the fact that that takes place. And um, that's part of being a Christian is speaking to stand, stand up, to speak out and stand up. And mm -hmm. I, I, I want the church to do that. I want the church to once again wake up to uh, what it means to be uh, righteous day. To have to have a sense that this is just wrong it should not happen and to have the confidence to say that i mean jesus did walk into on two occasions the temple and clear it out from all the impropriety that was taking place and and god has showed us what to do and what he's pleased with you know and to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our god is one of those things the prophet says and so I think the church needs to just be awake and aware and be willing to speak and not to pick fights and not to put ourselves in danger on purpose, but to be willing to stand up because I'm telling you, John, in these in these moments, we are being brainwashed by the press into believing that nobody wants to hear what we're saying. That's not true. Uh, it was true when I was a young man. It's true now. I would be in secular college classes and the professor or somebody would give an opinion that that was uh, was an anti-Christ opinion. And uh, more than once, I, I would speak up and address that. And I'm a young guy, 25 years old or whatever, sitting in a class. And and uh, afterwards, I still remember um, uh, more than once where people approached me and said, you know what you said, I was in agreement with. Wow. And so there are quite a number of people who are just waiting for somebody who will speak. 
So what should they do? Go to school board meetings, you know. Uh, if you've got places that in your heart to run for a council, city council or school board position, find a place that you can serve and you can bring in uh, the values that, that the believers in Christ have and, and once again begin to impact uh, the communities that we live in. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you so much uh, for sharing this. And again, it's time to keep our eyes uh, lifted up because our redemption is drawn nigh. Redemption is uh, and it, uh, we'll be uh, raptured soon, you know. That's and right. so this is, you see all these pieces, you know, falling into place. And and Pastor, thank you so much for sharing this with us and and uh, to remind us that we're to keep our eyes on Jesus and and to speak for truth. Amen. And, uh, and so, but I want to invite our church family to our, Sunday morning services at 8.30 and 10.45 a.m. And Pastor, you're taking us through the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 5. We're Mark going to be looking at two healings. Oh, and you know, Mark is, that is Mark, the Gospel of Mark, and you mentioned this, it shows Jesus as, uh, is it the servant? He's the servant, yes. And so you see him ministering to people and healing to them. And don't we need that today? We, we sure do. Yeah. So, Pastor, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you guys or seeing you guys on Sunday. We look forward to uh, for you guys to tune in, and we'll see you soon. God bless you. Amen.